I'm going to show you guys how to route contact drums into separate audio tracks in Ableton. And this is so that you can get uh, extra processing opportunities for each track in Ableton. You can use Ableton effects, you can use your third party plugins on these drums instead of just having to rely on contacts effects, contacts mixer in order to um, mix the drums. So the first thing you're going to do is create some audio tracks. 11. 11 audio tracks. You're going to make 11. Sorry, no, you're going to make 10 audio tracks. First thing you're going to do is make 10 audio tracks and a MIDI track. And you can put these in a group like I did. Uh, you don't have to, but that's just how I organize it. Um, so 10 audio tracks, I name them as follows because these are each of the channels in contact. Kick, snare, hi-hat, tom one, two, three, four, overhead stereo, room, and overhead mono. There's also a tambourine and woodblock channel in contact, but you can hear those pretty well in the overheads. So I decided not to not really use those in, in contact anyway. I usually have those separately, those samples separately. So... I don't have those. Like I said, you can hear them in the overhead, so you don't need to create um, uh, audio tracks for those, but if you want to have separate control over those, you should make two more and uh, add two to everything in this quick tutorial uh, when we go and route the tracks. But for just this setup, the basic drums, you're going to need 10 audio tracks um, and a mini track, and I have them grouped. The 10 audio tracks are going to be um, input tracks, and we'll get to that more in a second. So you're going to set them as um, in. There's auto, off, but you're going to do in. So it's going to be accepting audio in from contact. Um, on your MIDI track, you're going to load contact. And pull up whatever drummer you're using. I'm using, um, I am using Studio Drummer Lite, the Session Kit Lite, which is just the one I use. I think it's great, it sounds good. So once you have your drummer loaded, you can go up, up here, right click and select outputs. Um, there might already be some here. You're gonna go to this plus sign here and you're going to make 10 outputs. It's gonna be 10, I already have mine made, but I'm just gonna show you guys how to do it. 10 outputs, you're gonna do two channels because they're all gonna be stereo tracks because Ableton does not have mono tracks. So if you're doing this with another DAW, you might wanna route them to mono tracks because they're technically mono uh, signals, but with Ableton, we're gonna make them all stereo because that's just how Ableton reads them. So 10 stereo tracks, you can hit delete existing channels before creating new ones. So you're going to hit OK, and that's going to get you 10 stereo tracks here. Um, with each of these tracks, you're going to then go in to the bottom here and click, and you're going to route them to contacts, virtual hardware outputs. So. Um, in Ableton, it does not recognize output one and two when you go back to Ableton around it. So skip one and two, I think because that's the master output. So skip one and two and start with three and four and work your way up. Like I said, if you want to add the um, the wood block and the tambourine channels, you're gonna add two more to this tutorial. But um, I'm just gonna stick with these ten tracks. Um, so, okay, so stereo one is going to be three, four, and you're going to click here. It's probably going to say not connected if you haven't done this yet. And uh, another thing to notice is that these are all of contacts outputs. They're not numbered the way uh, you're going to see them after you select them. So like, you know, it says stereo one, stereo two, surround five, but this is a list of one, two, 32, I think. So this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so on, so on. So we're gonna skip one and two, 
We're going to make this three and four. And you can just hit this next arrow here and go right to the next one. See how the I'm selecting surround five, one, two, but it's actually five. And this is actually six. So just keep note of that if you're not seeing five, six. Um, it's, they're named differently. It's around five. It's around five. But they're, when you actually click on them, you're going to see the plugin out and the corresponding number for the output. So you go all the way up to that. Keep doing it for all ten channels. Um, I even got to some aux. So just don't keep, don't pay attention to the name there. Just pay attention to what it comes up as after you click OK. So once you have all of that, you're going to click OK. And then you're going to go back to Ableton. Now we're going to take each of these 10 tracks, and we're going to accept that audio from contact. So I'm going to select, set the uh, audio track to in, so it can bring audio in. Um, set it to contact drummer, and you're going to do three and four for the first one. Second one is going to be five and six, seven, eight, so on and so on. Um, you can select all of these at one time, shift click, and then set them all to contact drummer. You want to save some clicks, but you will have to go in individually to each one and select three and four, five and six, seven and eight so on so on so i have up to 22 here and these are all stereo tracks in ableton because that's just how ableton processes them so i have these 10 tracks so now instead of having your contact drummer all in one track um, where you can't really do anything outside of contact now since you're routing it into ableton as separate tracks um, you can turn off so you're just hearing the kick through the overhead and the snare mic. You can process each uh, part of your drum kit differently. So if you want to add your own Ableton effects or third party waves, uh, whatever else, you can drag those right onto the track just like you would any other track. And it just gives you a little bit more control as you can see all the tracks are lighting up. So now I have a little bit more control over each one of these elements in contact as opposed to just um, using the contact mixer, which is great. It has some, you know, I'm just using the default um, settings for each thing. Sometimes I'll move the mics around a little bit, but for the most part, it sounds great coming out. But sometimes I just want to add some additional EQ or in your arrangement if you want to add some other effects or what have you. So doing this, yeah, even... Uh, setting volumes because you know contact you saw how long it took to open up um it's a pretty intensive cpu uh plugin but now you can adjust all your volumes pans uh you can even do sends if you want to use your own reverbs and stuff like that but you can adjust everything here as opposed to having to go into the contact app uh plugin and uh controlling things there so you can get your drum kit sounding the way you want it in contact as much, as much as you can and then continue your processing in Ableton. Yeah, so that is how to route uh, contact drums to Ableton Live tracks.